Fight Tag TV fans, we're out here in sunny Arizona at the U.S. Palm Private Test and Training Facility. And one of the things that we have an opportunity to do out here is take a long range shot. Now there's a lot of folklore, legend, and myth surrounding the long range shot. There's a lot of stories and there's some real famous shooters that have made confirmed kills at long range. A perfect example is Carlos Hathcock and some of the hits that he made in Vietnam. So we feel that it's relevant to take a hard look at it and really investigate the difficulties of making hits at extreme long range. We're gonna try a shot out to a mile based on a story by a special operations soldier that I know by the name of Scott. Other than that, he'll remain nameless because he's still on active duty. He tried a shot in 2004 or 2005 and actually had a confirmed kill at roughly a mile with an Accuracy International 300 Winchester Magnum with a Schmidt and Benner 4 to 16 scope. He was in an overwatch position. He had dope on his gun out to 1300, but he lazed a group of four insurgents out at the distance of roughly a mile. He could identify crew serve weapons like RPGs, PKMs, and whatnot. He took a shot, missed. They started to run away from him. He shot again, knocked an individual down. Shot yet again, knocked another individual down. Then his buddies came back to retrieve the second individual he hit. Shot again, missed. At that point, he was out of ammo, had to reload. They got behind cover. The first individual he hit never got up. He was a confirmed kill. The other guy, we don't know. He may have been also. That's a bona fide story related to me personally by a special operations sniper who made a confirmed kill at a mile. In honor of guys like that, we're gonna try it out here. We're looking forward to it. I'm sure you are too. Wish us luck. All right, gang, we're out here day two out in Arizona, way back in the back country. And we're out here, we're gonna zero the TRG-42, 338 Lapua, with the Schmidt Bender 5 to 25. We got a target down here at 400 yards. We're gonna get it on paper, get it as dialed in as we can, because then we gotta kind of hump it up in the hills and hopefully get ourselves in a position to be able to do the mile shot. This is not easy, it's gonna be an all day affair, and we're kind of figuring it out as we go. Should be kind of interesting. All right, I'm here. 400, we're gonna to try to get it on the steel and then refine it on the paper. I got my bro Dave Royer spotting for me on the Leica spot and scope, and uh, hopefully this won't take long to get me dialed in at 400. Going hot. I first met Larry uh, in Special Forces. He was on the Halo team and I was on the combat dive team. And kind of like sister teams, we did a lot of stuff together. Larry Vickers uh, back then called him a flat belly hard dick. Low. Since I've known him, he's been a great shooter. Uh, started out through the Q course, he was in light weapons, and that's kind of where he picked up his knack for some of this. Real interested in the foreign weapons, and really took to shooting. So, yeah, he's been great all along. Tango down. Okay, I'm gonna shoot on the bull now. What I wanted to make sure was the gun and, the, and everything was as spot on as it could be. I mean, obviously you want a good zero. If at all possible, you want to eliminate windage out of the equation. You can always deal with elevation better than windage. I saw the trail, it went to the right. You're about six inches off the right of the target. The spotter needs to really talk the shooter's bullet into the target. He's not always gonna see where it's hit. And that's your job is to spot it and make corrections for him and bracket that up to the target. Get in the right bull. Upper right bull. All right. Oh, dude, dead center. Excellent. That was a good break, too. Yeah.
Okay, first three shots right in here in the black. Judging by that, that's under a four inch group, three shots at 400, so it's technically under a minute of angle. Then I adjusted, I'm over here, a little bit bigger, but still minute of angle group. Then I shot two more after another adjustment, I'm here, and then my last shot was at the center of the steel, this shot right here. Because I was aiming about right here, so I'm about one inch high, one click, we're good to go. 400 meters, I'm as zeroed as I can possibly get it within this time frame. Okay, so we're out here at 800. We've essentially doubled our distance from our 400 meter shot. And once we get on the paper here, we got our nice TAC TV logo. We're gonna ID off the white Ipsic and the orange bucket. Once we get shots on target, everything's good to go. Then we're gonna double it again back out to our mile distance. Wish us luck. You know, at first, uh, when Larry said he was gonna do a mile long shot, I thought, okay, well, we figured we'd go out to a range or try and do something like that. And then he wanted to do it under real field conditions. So we came up here to the ranch and uh, well, we gathered up some targets and hiked up into the hills and set up some stuff. Got out, set up the targets at 400, got it dialed into there, moved back to eight. I actually went through Special Forces Sniper School in 1983. I attended the course with an M21, went through it. And at that time, it was kind of a, a mimic of the Marine Corps Sniper School and enjoyed it, had a you know blast with it and whatnot, and always kind of been a closet sniper ever since and liked shooting long distance and whatnot. Although my job title never really applied in that. I was really an assaulter. So I don't really go out and train people doing sniping, but I knew a little bit about it from looking at it from behind the gun and as well as downrange. Here you go. Hi. Just a little though. Yeah. Drop it another minute, you were a little high. The wind wind is still good, it's just slightly left. Yeah, that was me. We're done here at eight. We're frankly as close as we're gonna be. Elevation's dead on, we're fighting a little bit of wind, so we're getting some left and right. So we're gonna call it good and then go ahead and get out to a mile before the wind kicks up. It becomes all but impossible. Remember, we're gonna be dealing with some atmospherics, just like Scott did on that day in Iraq. And, um, we're just gonna have to deal with it and roll with it and push her on out to a mile. It's rare that you actually have to set targets from horseback. this is so relevant is over in Iraq and Afghanistan and terrain much like this particularly in Afghanistan we have soldiers that are facing extended ranges regardless of the small arm weapon system they field M4 carbine M24 machine gun bolt action sniper rifle whatever they have to extend the range and try to get hit on enemy rode out with the horses took the uh, plastic target out, got it out, found a nice open area where we could actually see some impacts around it, got it set up. Gang, it is game time. We're out here, we got our posse downrange setting up a garbage can, essentially, more or less the size of an upper torso of a man at one mile. And I'll be honest with you, for every 100 guys that are talking about shooting something in a mile, there ain't one of them that's done it. This is unreal. I'll be shocked, personally, if we make this shot. I'm gonna double the dope on the scope and then we're gonna try it. We're gonna kinda go off that in order to hopefully walk me in. The wind's picking up. We've had a perfect day out here in Arizona to shoot this, but the wind's picking up. We got some ravines between us and the shot. Not unlike Afghanistan, I might add. In many cases, the spotter here is more important than the guy pulling the trigger because he's gonna be the guy to be able to trace the round and give you the feedback you need to adjust and hopefully hit the target. Hopefully we don't have to go through a case of ammo to hit it and I'm hoping that comes out on the other end and we got to hit on target, baby. Okay, for those of you that want to see a mile, over my shoulder is the target I'm going to be shooting at and the cameraman's going to zoom in on it now. Roger that, uh, we're going to go hot. Spotter ready. 
I saw that round actually. There's a big gray tree about 10 feet away. Mm -hmm. It went into that tree. I saw the bullet. Is it, how was elevation looking? Elevation's probably about five feet high. Okay, I brought her back down. And 10 feet to the right. All right, should I put on any dope or should I just hold off? Let's dope it and try to bring it in because we'd like you to put the uh, sight right on the barrel. Okay, got it. So I need to come left. Yeah, so let bring it left one click. Okay. Down the click and let's hit it again. All right. Oh, way low. Oh, yeah. You see it? Way low. I, I saw that. the bullet, but it's way low. Okay, got it. You know what's good though? Windage Dave is on. Yeah, did you catch that? Can we stay on the rock face, Dave? Yeah. Okay. Let's dial in on that. All right. Whoa. Still low. Windage is good. Whoa. We're the mount's loose. I gotta tell you, I actually had a lot of faith. And uh, when the scope mount went, I thought, wow. Well, one of the things I did on my TRG, uh, I had a, a company mount a Picatinny rail on it, and that had a 20 degree slant. So we were already kind of preloading the scope for long range shooting, which worked out for the scope, I might add. The problem is the mount wasn't adequately tightened to the receiver. Now, uh, my fault entirely because I assumed it was rock solid, it wasn't. Loss is zero all the time, spent at 400, 800 was lost. We had to kind of stop filming, tighten it back up and get back on target. So that kind of made me realize my weak link was the mount and the assumption I made that that Picatinny rail was tight. I won't do that again, I promise you. Let me shoot the nose again, Dave. Yeah, spot her on. Low. Low Saw it. Right on. Larry got it put back together. Still had good quality dope. Did you see the impact? Uh -uh. It's right under the barrel. Once we started shooting and I walked him into the target, I was pretty confident he was going to get a hit. I'm going to fit. Don't, don't mess with the wind. Okay. The wind played a huge part in it. And a lot of times he was so close, I'd just say, shoot at the same spot. Because if the wind changed, that bullet then has a chance of hitting the target. I held on the right side of the barrel. What should I do? Put a dope or fa favor? Do a little Kentucky windage on it. Aim to the right. OK. I think I'll make my shot. We'll see. I tell you, man, when you're out here on the ground and you're about ready to pull the trigger on a target that is basically a man-sized upper torso target, and it is a mile away, I'm going to tell you what, that is no joke, Holmes. Just the logistics to get the target in place and get everything set up to film it has been a pain. This is, this is the real deal. Far and away, the farthest shot I've ever taken. We're going hot again. hit the tree it's on you're about a foot low okay and I'd say Larry get a good trigger break on it you know work on your trigger control and that kind of hopefully bring him back down to the reality of okay I got to get on target but the important thing is breaking that trigger clean take your time squeeze it off in all shooting that trigger control is very important because if you don't get that right it's going to send the round off and it doesn't matter the optics or the gun it's not going to go where you want it Oh, dude! God, he's serious now. He knows it's possible. I want to hit this. All right, take your time, man. Squeeze it off. And I know the pressure was getting to him with the ammo running low, that I would try to get something mentally in his mind to bring him back. Let's get some good trigger control here. Dude! Oh, man. It looked like you hit right behind it. I guarantee you, we ain't missing that thing by much. Hey, go up to the target and see if we hit it. We're hitting all around that thing. Uh, and there is a possibility we may have hit it and not known it. Roger. Come 
my guess is we haven't hit or he'd have called us by now. Target is queen. No hits. We were getting low on ammo and he was frustrated with tighten that rail. Oh man! That was just f***ing under it, bro. Oh, mother f***. Hold the same spot there. All right. That was money. Okay, behind it. A little high right. The scope is f***ing loose again. When the second time it went, I gotta tell you, my faith dropped to almost nothing. Larry's a phenomenal shot, but at a mile to lose that much. Okay, gang, we had the mount come loose again. We had to take a little break, come back, tighten it up, and hopefully resume, and, and we're hoping to hit this thing now. Way off. The wind obviously changed. To be brutally honest, the more I did it, the more I expected to miss it. This is it, one last shot. Right, We're hoping one of these went through, and we just don't know it, but I got one more. I kind of know the hold, but, and I'm in the Kentucky windage mode now, because we got some wind down range that we're, we're not able to get a real good handle on. Dude, that might have hit it. Yeah, Tango, this is LAV. Go check. We are out of ammo. Check to see if we got any hits, and then you guys can break it down and head back. Thank you, Tommy. Well, we shall see. Some of those were real close, man. When you finished up the shots, when we finally came around and took a look at it. When you get out here and you get behind that gun and you actually try to make a shot at a mile, everything changes, especially if you're trying to hit a man. That's a different game. And we were talking about if there'd been the hood of this Humvee out there, I'd have hit it multiple times. It would have been ventilated, but to try to hit a man on one given shot, that's incredibly difficult. Outstanding. Look at that. <laughs> well done. You got a beautiful center hit. Do you yeah. hear that? Put the pepper on it. Yes, baby, outstanding. Bring it home. Well, you got, uh, you got one good hit at 6 o'clock on the wood, and then one perfectly uh, center shot on the, uh, on the plastic. Well done. All the way. Actually, my first impression, I wasn't, I wasn't as surprised to see the hole as I was at how small it was because the, my expectation, again, was that you know, 338 punching through this was really gonna put this hole into it. But because of the plastic and it compressed, I was shocked that it was so small. Excellent, now it took us a lot of rounds to do it. We had one round that kicked up behind the trash can that we thought might have been a hit, and my guess is that's the one. Excellent, we'll see you uh, down here for lunch. Very impressive. You hear that? Hey, you guys heard it when I did. Yes, baby, that's what I'm talking about, right through. All right, the guys just got back. We, I just put up my gear and I'm gonna come up here and check out my hit. Can't wait to see it. Terry, brother, what do you got? <laughs> well done. Thanks, bro. There it is. Cool. The one mile target. Awesome, now you had this thing inverted, correct? Yep, we actually what we did is uh, we found an old tree that basically had been torn down. So what we did is we slid it on top, try and keep it above the brush. And so it was about head height to me. So been a perfect sternum shot. Now, you saw hits all around it, right? I mean, I saw through the scope and from spot, and there was hits all around, but not actually in it except for one. Well, true. So what we did is we looked around and actually found a casing, found a Projo. Um, this hit, and then what it was is where the stick was coming down, there was another perfect hit dead center, okay. about 18 inches below this. So you, you were right on it. And the rest of the stuff, because of the wind, I'm sure was pushing yeah, all over. What was the wind like up there? Gusting. Yeah. There, there was never a constant. Pretty brutal. Yep. Well, dude, I did it. No. I wasn't well sure. Done. We were getting towards the end of the rounds there, and I, I didn't know if I was going to be able to hit it. But, dude, I'm, I'll take it any day of the week. Absolutely. You got it. Mile shot. Right there it is. He saw it. Yeah, baby. Gang, it's time to call today. I am smoked. I'll be perfectly honest with you. When I made that shot, the word came back over the radio. It was like taking the air out of a balloon. Had a great time. It's something I've never done before, and I was frankly highly skeptical we'd be able to do it. With the help of the Scottsdale Gun Club crew, the U.S. Palm guys, and some of my buddies, we were able to make a shot at a mile with this blaster. 
And the reason we did this, we want to try to replicate a shot that a friend of mine named Scott in special operations did in Iraq in roughly 2003 or 2004. It can be done. It's incredibly difficult. And like I said before, and I'll say it again, for the guys that have made the one mile shot, particularly for real, my hat's off to you. And if you dug what we did here today, make sure you stay tuned for next year because myself, the TAC TV crew, and the US Palm guys have something bigger, longer, and with a bigger boom planned. Hey, thanks for watching the Vickers Tactical YouTube channel. To subscribe, click here. And to watch some of my favorite videos, click here. Have a good one. LAV out.